Uh, we're here at Global Derivatives 2015 uh, with Professor Daryl Duffy, uh, Professor of Finance at Stanford School of Business. I suppose the first question I'd like to ask you is a bit about what you're speaking on today uh, around China. Do you think that uh, in terms of the reforms that they're doing in China that we'll see a convertible uh, yuan anytime soon? Or do you think it's still a long way off? Uh, surprisingly, the yuan or renminbi is already fully convertible in many foreign uh, financial centers. The main issue is getting capital into and out of China, and there are limits on that. However, those limits are being lifted gradually. The Chinese bureaucrats love to go gradually and carefully. Yeah. And so they're lifting uh, limits through the Stock Connect, which is a new uh, method for investing uh, in Shanghai. Uh, they are lifting it through the Shanghai Free Trade Zone, and they're lifting it through various types of um, permits that are provided for foreign investors to invest in China mm -hmm. and also for Chinese investors to invest overseas. Yeah. And I suppose following on from that question, if you look at the Chinese growth picture, it seems to be very fashionable within the market and pretty much consensus to become relatively bearish on China. What are, what are your, your views there? Do you think consensus has become too bearish on China? Well, there are a lot of naysayers. Uh, recently, a, f a former Goldman partner predicted that China looking forward it seems to him much like uh, Japan did uh, in 1990. However, I'm not that bearish. Uh, China does face some significant headwinds right now. Their growth rate is falling. Um, it had been as high as 15 percent, now it's going to be below 7 percent. Mm. They're dealing with uh, significant amounts of local government debt. Mm. They're trying to pivot their economy to more towards the consumer sector and away from the heavy manufacturing sector. Mm. They're dealing with, as you probably know, if you visited Beijing, a significant amount of air pollution. Yeah. Uh, they have lots of, lots of difficulties, but um, they have a very effective technocracy and they have a lot of capital and they still have plus 6% growth. So they will be able to deal with this um, over the long run. Um, if they liberalize their capital markets, I think they'll be fine. And, and I guess putting that aside in a slightly different area, you've done a lot of work around benchmarks. Um, we've had a lot of controversy recently around the LIBOR benchmark and the interest rate market, also WMR and the FX market. Uh, regulators have changed the benchmarks in WMR to make the windows slightly bigger for the calculation. Do you think that there are further things that regula regulators can do to improve benchmarks, such as the WMR fixing? Uh, sure. Um, well, as you, as you know, I worked a lot more on LIBOR than WMR. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the case of LIBOR, um, regulators have put a lot more regulation onto the market, mm -hmm. as, as they have done for the foreign exchange benchmarks, and they have changed the fixing methodologies. Mm -hmm. uh, but more needs to be done. And yeah. in particular, I think the swaps market is resting too heavily on a very tiny interbank lending market mm -hmm. in terms of getting its reference rates. In the case of WMR, as you probably know, mm -hmm. uh, the Financial Stability Board report that was chaired by Paul Fisher mm -hmm. of the Bank of England and Guy DeBell of the Re uh, Reserve Bank of Australia has recommended widening the fixing window to yeah. five minutes, and that's now been done. I think that's an interim measure. It's helpful yeah. because it spreads some of the pressure on fixed trades yeah. uh, to a wider to a wider window. But I don't view it as a, as the final fix. The uh, the incentives to uh, take advantage of fixed trade customers still exists. Um, that that's also being addressed by. Uh, monitoring and by governance um, processes, yeah. but altogether, I would prefer to see uh, something um, more based on uh, all-to-all trade-based yeah. benchmark. So for example, uh, a limited number of venues having an auction um, at a at a fixed time, yeah. as opposed to uh, entirely bilateral OTC trade transactions determining determining the benchmark. So, uh, so more needs to be done, but I think the at least for the time being, they're in pretty good shape. Yeah, well, I suppose there's first steps and then they need to do more work is kind of your summary. Yes, exactly. Um, and in terms of other areas of your work that you're working on, are there, is there anything you'd like to specifically discuss in terms of your research? Well, one of the projects I'm working on, in fact, uh, which I discussed here in Amsterdam this morning, mm -hmm. is the uh, treatment by the major dealers of what's called funding value adjustment, yeah. which is a mark-to-market adjustment to their swaps books. Mm -hmm. Uh, that purportedly is to reflect the expense associated with funding collateral. Yeah. 
uh, my research with my student Yang Song at Stanford and with Life Anderson at uh, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, uh, suggests that the calculation is right in terms of quantity, yeah. but that it's going into the wrong place on the balance sheet, yeah. and that it shouldn't be assigned to the swaps book, but rather should be an adjustment to the capital and the debt yeah. um, of the dealers. And uh, it, the numbers are getting kind of big now. It's uh, uh, several hundred billion, uh, pardon me, several hundred million at yeah. least for several of the dealers, some reaching over one billion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that needs to be turned around before the auditors get too carried away. The yeah. International Accounting Standards Board and the Financial Accounting Standards Board have yet to uh, provide an opinion on these adjustments, and I'm pretty confident they're yeah. not going to go along with the current practice, which is okay. not correct. <laughs> well, thanks very much for speaking to us, Professor Duffy, and uh, I look forward to your talk on China. Thank you so much, Saeed. Very nice Pleasure. to meet you. Yeah. Thanks Pleasure. very much. Thank you.